Hello guys, how are you doing? <clears throat> this is the material for exam number five. So um, yeah, well, I hope I can do it in, in two, three sessions, uh, two, three recordings, if I can. Uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, so, and I try to run each session, not more than 45 minutes, I'm afraid you fall asleep or <laughs> If, well, you always can stop and go back, but anyhow, uh, let's move on and uh, start talking about it. Uh, let me look at the time. So, yeah, okay. So I start, and then uh, whenever, wherever uh, fate and time take us, how about that? So let's go and phylum arthropoda. That is the largest phylum as far as the, num the number of the species goes. It is, uh, it has more then um, mollusks, uh, nematodes, and scientists are estimating, they're guessing that uh, they are gonna be, uh, I don't know, different text, different papers, different textbooks, they say different numbers, but they're gonna, right now it's well over a million different species have been discovered, but uh, they are estimating maybe four or five million, somewhere in that neighborhood, uh, all of the total of the species have been discovered so far uh, on planet Earth is about one and a half to two million. Uh, and imagine uh, almost half of that are the arthropods or more than half of that are the arthropods. So here is there, uh, Thomas um, Eisner, he uh, wrote a few books on uh, arthropods, but uh, this is one uh, that sticks in my mind. I thought I'll mention it. Bugs, he means all of the arthropods, not just the uh, phylum Hemiptera or a uh, class uh, uh, Hemiptera, order Hemiptera, or anyhow, you will see. Uh, bugs are not going to inherit the earth. They own it now. So might as well make peace with the landlord. So we need to make peace with the landlord, which are the arthropods. We cannot eliminate them, uh, but um, at least we can live with them in a way or not. Okay, so the name of the uh, clade, that would be clade uh, Panthropoda. So Panthropoda, uh, Pana, Pana, uh, Panath, Panarthropoda, Pan, it means all over pandemic, you're hearing that, that name. So it contains arthropods and two allied phyla, the Onycophora and uh, Tardigrada. So we will not talk about uh, uh, Tardigrada, but and, um, another name for this uh, clade is Ectisozoa. I mentioned that earlier uh, in the semester, um, they undergo ecdiasis. Uh, so they shed their exoskeleton or uh, nematodes also shed their uh, cuticle. So uh, phylum arthropoda, uh, arthron, it means joint, like the joints in your hand, and poda, uh, pod, uh, you know, pseudopod, you've heard of that, uh, it means foot. And uh, so they're guessing it's a polyphyletic, uh, the evolution of these organisms came from different phyla, and I think that's a term I identified for you guys before. And is one million and one hundred thousand species have been discovered so far. So uh, it might come up in the notes somewhere that, that scientists are guessing that that many more can be uh, discovered. Eosilomates, of course, they're eosilomates from now on. Everything we talk about is eosilomates. I said that since the earthworm, every phyla that we talked from earthworm was eosilomate until now. And the protostome with hemocele and uh, hemocele, it means the blood that is percolating in the coelomic area. They are segmented, not like the earthworm. They are segmented as head, thorax, and abdomen. And then the appendages like the legs or the antenna appendages, that's what we call them. This is my appendage. Okay, they are, um, they, uh, um, they, they are segmented in that way. <clears throat> tagmata, tagmata, it means fused body parts, such as when the head and thorax are combined together, it's called cephalothorax. 
So that is a talk, my head is at, uh, uh, it's a, as you know, cephalothorax is mentioned in here. So tagmata means fused body parts such as uh, cephalothorax. Terga, uh, uh, the segments, <coughs> I'm sorry, the singular is tergum. It's a good thing I brought some water. Huh? So terga is, uh, singular is tergum and dorsal plates on the back of the animals the plates of exoskeleton, which I will talk about the exoskeleton here in a minute, the structures of the skeleton, what is nuts and bolts of the exoskeleton. And then sternum, you remember that bone right here from beginning of semester in us, which the ribs attach and so on and so forth, it's called sternum. And uh, sterna uh, is in the back, uh, I'm sorry, it's in the front, it's a plural plates of the uh, plates that are in the front of us. Uh, in the front of the animals, we do not have sterna. We have sternum, only one. <clears throat> okay, so, um, but these animals, they have plates of exoskeleton in front of them. Okay, cuticle on top of the um, uh, exoskeleton and epicuticle, epi means top uh, waxy layer, and that's what it is. And the exoskeleton is made up of chitin and protein. So chitins are in rods and uh, surrounded by protein molecules, okay? So this hand of mine would be protein molecule and the rods, these rods would be the chitin. So chitin find in uh, endocuticle and exocuticle chitin rods surrounded by uh, protein matrix and exocuticle becomes sclerotized. It means become tan, that's the, the, the name uh, sclerotization means uh, becoming tan, becoming dark. And then epidermis, the top layer of the dermis and um, pores and setae are uh, in the exoskeleton can be found. And the setae in these animals are different than the setae in um, annelids, okay? The setae in these animals, they can sense the environment, okay? They are hair-like, just like just like the uh, uh, nematode uh, annelids, they have these hair-like projections and they can sense the environment, uh, but not for the um, nematodes, uh, the, uh, not the nematodes, annelids. The annelids, those setae uh, outside of the animal, uh, they were for locomotion and so on and so forth, not these guys. Uh, these guys is to sense the environment. Uh, hopefully it will come up, I will talk about them. Okay, here it is. Uh, that's a stretch of setae right here. And these are the pores, opening stocks right here. Come on, how come it doesn't work? Come on, oh, don't tell me. Hmm. Uh, come on. Okay. Here we go, finally, you got it. So uh, these openings right here are uh, tegment glands and so on and so forth. So let's go. Uh, epicuticle right here is a very top layer um, made up of uh, usually waxy layer. I talked to you, I, I told you guys. And procuticle is made up of exocuticle and endocuticle. Exocuticle, again, uh, rods of um, rods of chitin and surrounded by protein molecules. Then uh, an endocuticle is principal layer right here. Uh, same thing, uh, chitin and membranous layer is a very thin layer on the bottom. And then after that is the epidermis right there. Okay. Um, basement membrane is a connective tissue that as we know connects the um, epithelial tissues together and uh, take motile glands. Uh, okay, this is a term I would like you to know. Uh, uh, epideme is a structure that the protein, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, muscles, it's a projections inward. And this is a muscle. The muscles attach to these uh, projections. 
okay? Uh, Spine-like inwards projections of the cuticles that muscles insert and uh, in crustaceans and uh, insects. So right now, our muscles are attached to our bones inside of our body. These animals, on the other hand, their muscles are attached to exoskeleton. So they're functioning, they're moving based on the muscles being attached to the exoskeleton. But the exoskeleton, as you know, it covers, that's what they call an exoskeleton, covers the animal, but inside there are projections that the muscles attach to them. Okay, this is the structure of cuticle, uh, I'm sorry, chitin right here that uh, it's, it has nitrogen that look like a sugar molecule with nitrogen uh, group here, nitrogen group here. So, um, um, and then this is a cross section. This diagram is a cross section. As you can see, the chitons are um, rods and then and you have the protein molecules surrounding them. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense. And then of course, again, uh, same thing. Uh, this is not in your textbook. You have the cite, and then you have the epicuticle, exocuticle, um, and then endocuticle, epidermis, just like the last uh, PowerPoints, the last slides I showed it to you guys. The main thing is I wanna know, I want you to know that chitin is this molecule. And then of course, chitin are rods and then uh, the layers, are, and then another um, apodeme is the name of the structure right here. Okay, important um, importance of exoskeleton hardened and skin soft uh, uh, offers more protection against uh, predators and environmental hazards, provides more secure sites for muscle attachments. We talked about that. <clears throat> and allow the adjustment segments and uh, joints uh, function as a lever for great improvement and uh, it's like an armor for the animal. Here they are, uh, the arthropods, the uh, different type of, we will talk about each one of these, but he's giving you, you a prelude to what is coming at you, and then we'll talk about them. And uh, he's talking about all of these plates, all of these things are made up of exoskeleton. And molting or ecdiasis, another name for molting is ecdiasis, epidermis secretes and uh, the enzymes protease and chitinase. So these two enzymes digest away the protein and chitin. So the animal gets rid of the exoskeleton and then a new one uh, grows back. Meanwhile, while they are, they got rid of their exoskeleton, a new one is growing back, the animal can be exposed to predators. So that would be just soft tissues and muscles and organs and so on and so forth, um, you know, waiting for another animal to eat them. But, um, you know, the good thing is soon after the exoskeleton will grow back, epidermis secretes and protease and chitinase. Open circulatory system. Okay, we talked about open circulatory system and closed circulatory system in lab, previous exams. So you know about that. Largest arthropods is a Japanese crab. I have some pictures in here in a minute. Uh, Macrocaridia, they're about uh, four meters and smallest parasitic mites are demodex. They're in our uh, eyelashes and so on and so forth. And I will talk about them a little bit later on. And only invertebrates that can fly. No other invertebrates can fly. Here is that uh, Japanese crab that I was talking about uh, right here, uh, uh, Macrocaridia, uh, Korea, uh, which is uh, about four meter long. And you can see the people in the background and you, it gives you some appreciation as how big uh, some of these uh, arthropods. I have not seen any uh, in a huge size in person. Of course, pictures are right here. Okay, they have eyes that they can form image. And um, just like the cephalopoda, the eyes that can form image are, uh, well, they have two, two types of eyes. They have simple eye and compound eye. Compound eye can form image. Simple eye cannot form image and they only can see the light intensity. 
Okay, so uh, the compound I, let's talk about that. It's made up of a material right here. Okay, and simple I, it's made up of acillus. Acilli is plural, acillus is singular. Okay, so the compound I, which is, as you can see in this um, eyes of the fly, he has a cornea, he has crystal cones, he has pigmented microvilli, he has photoreceptors, and on the bottom, he attach the nerves, and the nerves go to the brain, and then um, the animal can form image. Okay, so, but the unit for compound eye is called omatidium. Similarities with annelids, um, before we go to specific uh, arthropods and talk about them, uh, segmentation of the body. Annelids had them from head to toe, uh, but not these guys. Okay, these guys are head, thorax, abdomen. And then of course the appendages can be segmented. Uh, nervous system look like a ladder. You know, most of the species we talked about so far, it is important that you should know this, that uh, you have two nerve cords that I draw and then you have transverse nerves that connects the two nerve cord together. And then you might have in some species, you have, might have lateral nerve. Okay, these are called lateral nerve that I'm drawing. Okay, so anyhow. Uh, spiral cleavage, we talked about at the beginning of semester. Differences with uh, annelids, uh, a fixed number of segments. Uh, no uh, septum between head, thorax, and abdomen. Usually they do not have. And then silomy cavity are reduced, uh, open circuitry system, analytes had uh, a closed circuitry system, and special structures for respiration. Uh, analytes, they did not have those special structures. Uh, here they have gills or lungs, uh, not in those. Jointed appendages, analytes is in half. Some of the analytes had appendages uh, like uh, uh, perpodium. You remember that perpodium? but they did not have a jointed one. Okay, exoskeleton, analytes did not have any, and compound eye, analytes had some simple eyes. And no cilia in these animals. The phylum is phylum onychophora. Uh, it's, uh, here we go, I should say it. It's something between arthropods and analytes. That's uh, why I mentioned the similarities and differences of the arthropods with analytes. So something, uh, it's, they are something between arthropods and annelids, and uh, the common name for this group is velvet worms or walking worms, and they're worm-like with head and antenna. They have cuticle. These are characteristics of the velvet worms. We do have them in the lab. Uh, make sure you know them, you look at them, and you study them. And then uh, segmentation, of course, these animals have their phylum onychophora. They have some segmentation. They have simple eyes. They have ventral mouth, which is called mandible. The mouth is on ventral side of the animals. And they called, uh, remember uh, when we studied human skull, this is called mandible. This is maxilla, mandible. And so they have mandible. Not all arthropods have mandible. That is something you're gonna learn. We will talk about that. Uh, but um, this group, uh, the, this phylum, uh, the mouth part has mandible. So uh, there are five subphyla, and I hope they don't keep changing them. Since I've been teaching this course, they've been changed at least, I would say, two or three times, but that's okay. Um, uh, I hope this is the most recent uh, of the, in your textbook. And uh, subphylum trilobita, of course, they're all extinct. We think there are uh, some students emailed me and they um, found some species in deep sea. They look like trilobita. Chilicerata, uh, the mouth part has chilicerae, okay? And uh, like spiders and, you know, we talk about scorpions and so on and so forth. Crustaceans, you're familiar with that. You go to red lobster, most likely you're going to eat a crustacean. You've heard of that term before. You know, they are the aquatic, they call them aquatic uh, insects. Okay. And then hexapoda, that name changes. 
uh, as I say, since I've been teaching a few times, uh, it was Bioramus, uh, but right now they change it to hexapoda. Hexa it means six, poda it means leg. They have six legs. Okay. And the next, the next one uh, is Myropoda, which uh, it used to be a part of uh, Bioramus, and now they separate them. They say, okay, all of the centipedes and millipedes, they go into this subphylum, subphylum Myropoda. Okay. Okay, so subphylum Trilobita, um, the very first subphylum, uh, they have three longitudinal lobes. Okay, you will see that in a picture. Uh, all could be extinct. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, this could be, they could be extinct. And I'll show you a picture. And uh, they are primitive marine animals. Uh, three tagmata, uh, cephalon, thorax, and, uh, and pygidium, not abdomen. Uh, they have, what is the term if it was in the classroom? <clears throat> I would ask, what is pygidium? Pygidium was the last segments in the annelids. You remember that? Okay, so they have uh, cephalon, thorax, and pygidium. Longitudinal grooves uh, divided uh, body into three lobes. And right here, so the gills, it's put, here is putting question mark because we don't know. So this is one lobe, this is another lobe, and this is another lobe. So tri lobida, that's how they got the name. Uh, they have, they used to have campani, the head, thorax, all of this is thorax, and the last portion of the animal is called pygidium. Okay, so this is the um, cross section of the animal. In the cross so section, the big lobe is called axial lobe. And then they, they have the two plural lobes here and another plural lobes here. And then of course you have your segmented, as you can see, segmented legs. Okay, coxa is where the legs attach to uh, the exoskeleton that the eggs attach to. That's a trilobita, extinct. Now here, um, this was emailed to me, um, Aquatic, and they found it recently. And then you guys, if you are interested, you can uh, Google it a little bit more and find some um, sites or scientific papers that they say, yes, trilobita have not been extinct. And here are the new species have been found in a scientific study, not, not like my website, <laughs> not Wikipedia. Wikipedia is not scientific. Uh, everybody write their opinion in Wikipedia. Okay, the next sub, so trilobita was quick, short, not much to talk about. Uh, the next one is uh, phylum Chilicerata. Chilicerata examples uh, in this phylum are horseshoe crab. They're huge, they can become huge. Uh, spiders, ticks, mites, scorpions, and sea spiders, which I will not talk about it. But those are all examples of um, subphylum chilicerata. Chilicerae for they have the mouth part, as I said, the name of the subphylum, it comes from the mouth part. So the mouth part can seize uh, other animals, peers, and uh, tear prey. Uh, food partially digested outside, so they release some enzymes on the surface of the, the prey and the prey is digested uh, partially, and then they swallow, they eat the rest of the animals. Feeding by pedipalp. So our hands, we are bringing food to our mouth that the, the, the structures, the name of the structure that they have is called pedipalp. Uh, Chilicerae do not have antenna. Okay, make that in your notes. And they have four pairs of walking legs four, not six, four. And then six pairs of appendages. So we talked about five of them, pedipalp, walking legs, and chelicerate would be another one. Okay, so um, you'll see a picture here in a minute. 
uh, forward pairs of walking legs, uh, suck food. Uh, uh, you know, the, the food that they eat, they are usually um, uh, arthropoda. And arthropoda, they have a hard skeleton outside. So what happens, they, uh, you know, they penetrate into the, after they kill the animal or some of them in their life, and they penetrate into the animal and suck the food out. That's pretty much what that sentence is saying. Carapace is an exoskeleton that covers back of the animal, the cephalothorax, okay? Carapace, uh, by definition, is an exoskeleton plate that covers cephalothorax. Okay, class Merostomata, subclass uh, Xiophosuridia, uh, Sorida. Do not worry about subclass, but the uh, class, yes, you should worry about. Okay, so class Merostomata for lab purposes and also for lecture questions. So horseshoe crab, uh, the scientific name for horseshoe crab, I don't know, have you guys seen a horseshoe crab or not? Uh, uh, in the lab, we have them, they're small, uh, but I've seen uh, in real, the preserved one, a huge one. In the zoology lab, they were they can become huge, and the scientific name is Limelius uh, polyphemus, and there is a test in microbiology by that name. Uh, they use the blood to test for specific microorganisms. Carapace unsegmented covers the uh, cephalothorax. I talked about that. Telson is toward the posterior end of the animal. It's like a rod, and then when the animal is flipped, they use their telson to flip themselves upside down, uh, right side up, uh, so on and so forth. Cephalosaurus has four pairs of walking legs, one pair of chelicerae, and one pair of pedipalp, and five pairs of book gills, uh, which is not the appendage. You will see pictures here in a minute. Uh, two compound eyes and two simple eyes, so they can form image nocturnal. It means these animals um, are active at night. Okay, trilobita larva, uh, sexually mature at nine years, uh, lifespan is 19 years. So half of their life, they're immature. Imagine we human will live 80 years and up to age 40, we cannot reproduce. We are not mature. We cannot um, um, do the fertilization. So they live, the lifespan is 19 years, and half of it, nine years of it, almost half of it, they are uh, not mature. Okay, here's a horseshoe crab. Some of you did not know. Um, where am I going to start? Let's start with simple eyes. Simple eyes are here. Compound eyes are right here. You can see it on the side of two of them. One on that side, one on this side. Carapace, this is carapace that covers cephalothorax. This is the abdomen right here. So there is a hinge and opisthosomal abdomen right here. This is the telson that I was talking about. If the animal is flipped like this, this one, this picture right here, if it is flipped like that, it can use the telson and flip itself on the right side, which this is the, this is the right side. I'm putting stars on it. Okay, so let's go on the uh, ventral side of the, this was on dorsal side. This is dorsal side. This is a ventral side, ventral view. There, right here, ventral view. Okay, so look, you have the chelicerae, then you have the pedipalp, and they're not walking legs. And I gave you the definition of those. And they have one, two, three, four pairs of walking legs. And then somebody look at it and say, oh, this animal has six legs. No, that's not right. They do not have six legs. They have four legs. We call them walking legs. One pair, of course, four pairs of walking legs, pairs. One pair of pedipalp, bring food to the mouth and then one pair of chelicerae. Okay, then they have these uh, operculum and the book gills right here. Uh, there you can see them. 
and then you have the anus right at the base of the <coughs> telson. Sorry about that. At the base of telson, and that should uh, do it. Okay, class arachnido, uh, all spiders, uh, uh, okay, within uh, the uh, uh, subphylum, we are talking about class arachnida. This is the second class I'm talking about. The first class was Merostomata, and then this is uh, arachnida. Uh, arachnido, have you seen the movie Arachnophobia? <laughs> it was a fun movie. It was okay. It was scary to some. Sometimes it was not that bad, like Halloween. Have you seen the movie Halloween? It's very scary, uh, but uh, it was a little bit scary, you know, arachnophobia. But anyhow, all spiders are carnivores. Carnivores, and then uh, black widow, brown recluse, spiders, and scorpions. They all belong to this class. Okay, you've heard of those species. Uh, they belong to this class. Um, also, scorpions takes, I'm repeating myself because I like scorpions so much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, yeah, anyhow, I have stories of scorpions, but anyhow. Uh, takes, mites, uh, daddy long legs, they all belong to this class. And then uh, tagmata are cephalosorax, uh, an abdomen, and uh, chelicerae, pedipalps, four walking legs. I'm repeating information. It's no antenna. I'm repeating information. Claws and fangs, which are modified pedipalps and chelicerae. I'll show you some pictures and we'll talk about it here in a, in a minute about fangs. Okay, that is important. Uh, and fangs, remember, they are modified pedipalps. Uh, some have poison glands, as you know, uh, and stingers, first arthropods to move on land. Very important information right here, evolutionary wise. They were the very first arthropods that they moved to land. So uh, all of the arthropods were originated in the sea. And then they came to the land. And since there was no predator and ample food all over, they went through adaptive radiation. You know that term, adaptive radiation. And they flourished on planet Earth all over. Okay. And of course, they learned to fly. Uh, most are predaceous and have claws, fangs, poison glands, and stingers, but no antenna and mandibles. Predaceous it means they prey on other, um, on other arthropods. Okay, that's what I was waiting for. So the fang right here, they did not mention it. Fang right there. Okay, so compound eyes, simple eyes, they didn't mention it in here. Uh, prosoma, I have to give you a definition of prosoma uh, and opisthosoma right here. So prosoma is this segment, cephalothorax, and opisthosoma is the abdomen. Okay, you can see that. And the animals are covered with setae. And these setae, as you can see, they are scary. They can sense the environment, the vibration of the, uh, if they wind a web, uh, they, or the air current, they can, uh, you know, look at them. So they have four pairs of walking legs. One, two, three, four. Oh, sorry, my four became star, that's fine. And then somebody will look at these two pairs and they think, they are part of legs. No, they are not. This is a pedipalp. This is a pedipalp right here. Pedipalp, they enlarged that picture. Pedipalp, pedipalp. And then they have fangs. So the fangs are modified part of chelicerate. And right here, there is a duct inside of the fang that goes into the poison glands right here. If the animal has poison glands. Okay, so that duct goes from here to the poison glands. And then when the animal sees something that would like to eat, they go ahead, pierce their fangs into the animal, paralyze them. And when the animal is paralyzed, it can become functionless to some extent or die. Then they go ahead, use the pedipalp, bring the animal to the mouth, their prey, and then, of course, they use, the, as I said, most of their prey is uh, 
uh, they are um, arthropods, they have exoskeleton. So they use their um, chelicerate and they suck all of the uh, goodies from inside of the animal out. Okay, uh, class arachnida, then you have, uh, oh, what happened in here? There is something missing here. Uh, the uh, arania, um, arachnida orders, they are order arania and order scorpionidia and order acari. Okay, let's talk about each one of them. Scorpionidia, uh, nida is the scorpions. Okay, so you know that one, but arania and um, acari we need to talk about. So arania are your um, spiders. Uh, tarantula spiders, you know, so on and so forth. All spiders are carnivores and spiders male always smaller than females and uh, cephalothorax or prosome. And uh, did they give you abdomen is opisthosome in these animals, that's what they call them. Um, anyhow, both unsegmented uh, cephalothorax and abdomen, they are not segmented. Um, so that is why they are called uh, prosome and opisthosome. Uh, Pedicel is where these two regions come together, are connected, and chelicerae has fangs, have poison glands. I think I talked about all of that. Uh, Pedipalps have four walking legs, malpigian tubules. Malpigian tubules, they are structures in the posterior end of the animals, and they are used uh, like um, to absorb uh, water and, um, uh, and minerals and so on and so forth. Uh, that's what the function of malpigian tubules are. Book lungs, trachea or both, uh, spiracles uh, that opening the outside. Uh, the spiracles in these animals, are, if this is the animal, I hope I can, okay, this is the animal. For example, they have these openings for respiration. These uh, this spiders and so on and so forth, they do not have, uh, they have these openings. It, it, they do not have a structure that covers them. Okay, I'll put it across. So they do not have a structure. You would learn later on like grasshopper. They have a structure that covers the spherical. Okay. But these guys, uh, the spherical is naked, if you would. It's open to the outside. Coxal gland uh, eliminates waste through uh, pores. They're at the base of uh, uh, legs. That's what the coxal glands are. And ocelli, eight simple eyes, lens, optic uh, rods, retina, but they cannot form image. They just see the light intensity. Poor vision, but I have sensory setae. I talked about that. Uh, sensing vibration of its web, silk glands for web spinning. And not all spiders uh, make web for trapping their prey. Example, wolf spider, jumping spider, fish spiders, they do not, uh, based on your textbook, they do not make um, web. Okay, there are two types of venom. Oh, great, we talk about it now. So since we are talking about venom, uh, I thought this is left for later on during semester, but great, let's do it now. Uh, there are two types of venom. Uh, the neurotoxic. What does neurotoxic do it, when the venom is released? It goes and it stops the neurotransmitters. So when the neurotransmitters do not, does not go from one neuron to the next neuron, then voila, the animal become paralyzed. So death, if you would. The other one is hemolytic. So hemolytic is a type of poison that is released and it breaks down red blood cells. It breaks down the, red, the blood cells of the animal. So when the blood cells are broken down, then the oxygen cannot get in, uh, cannot be transported, uh, food cannot be transported, and the animal dies. Okay, most venom in the nature are combination of these two. Okay, so that is something. Um, Order scorpionidia, scorpions common in tropical and subtropical. They hide, they do not like you. They will go hide unless you bother them. You bother them, they come up. 
uh, tegmata is cephalothorax, pre-abdomen, and post-abdomen. Post-abdomen has five segments in stinging apparatus, ovoviviparous and viviparous. That's what these animals are. Uh, you probably, in the sponges, I talked about ovoviparous and viviparous. Ovoviviparous, they lay eggs, and the eggs immediately hatch. And that's why you see scorpions in the back of the scorpions. You see they have baby scorpions, okay? Or these animals, uh, the viviparous, they give birth, okay? So I don't know any species that they give birth, um, as far as scorpions goes. Most of the scorpions that I've heard, I read, I know about, they're oviviparous. I don't know why, maybe I'll put that term in there to make sure you guys know the difference between viviparous and oviviparous. Uh, viviparous is the um, animals that give birth, like you. We human give birth, okay? We do not develop an egg inside of us that the egg becomes uh, a human, okay, um, shark, they develop the egg inside, and as soon as the animal wants to come out, the, the animal inside of the mother gets out of the egg, and the young shark will come out. Order of curry, uh, ticks and mites, great, let's talk about them, they're a little bit funner uh, than scorpions, they live all over, I mean, all over the planet Earth, complete fusion of cephalothorax. It means the head uh, and abdomen, everything is just one big bulk, okay? You will see some pictures. Mouth parts have a capitulum, okay? Um, and chelicerae for piercing, tearing, and uh, gripping food, serious agricultural past. Most species have a tree hosts life cycle. So they are agricultural agricultural pests, uh, they eat crops, both livestock and crop. Livestock, I mean, sheep and cow, they are pests of them. And also um, uh, they are eat plants as well. So here's the scorpions, I'm sorry, uh, it's the last order or the scorpionidia. Uh, scorpions are truly viviparous and females uh, brood their young within their reproductive tract. And then um, scorpions are truly viviparous and females brood their young within. Um, you look up your textbook and um, uh, if they um, give any examples that I, I'm, again, I don't know any examples. So here are the post-abdomen and here is a pre-abdomen and then the stinging apparatus is back here. Unlike um, their cousins, uh, they have the stinging apparatus in the chelicerae area. Okay, so. Uh, mite, larva, lymph, adult, okay, the uh, uh, vector of diseases, they can be, oh, chiggers. Oh, okay, I'm talking about um, uh, the diseases now. Uh, trombicula is the red bug, and um, you probably have heard about it, the red bug. Um, chiggers, they cause dermatitis. Dermatitis is inflammation of skin, and then a transmission of pathogens. Uh, demodex, this is a picture of a demodex. It's a cigar shape, okay? And then um, what have you? These animals usually large, 50% of the population have demodex in our eyelashes and so on and so forth. They do not bother us. However, when demodex are in the animals, causes mange in animals, what happens, they're cigar shaped and causes no problem in human, but it causes death in dogs and cats. I have seen pictures, the animal have been scratching itself so much, they dig a hole on their body, a big, huge hole. And of course, those animals that they, they got out of, and they have demodex, just because of demodex. And when it get to that stage, you know, you have to put the animal into sleep. There is no way that you can fix, that animal can be fixed. And that's why, you know, they give the animals shampoos and so on and so forth. Um, to fix them and to take care of them. 
Okay, found in hair follicle, I talked about that. Okay, Sarcoptis scabies, uh, that's right there, that's character right there. And you can see the cephalothorax, everything is in one chunk right here. Okay, intense itching, skin parasites. And ixodes uh, or heart tick, uh, these are Lyme disease, uh, Borrelia burgdorferi, um, Lyme disease. So a little bit of story about Lyme disease. There is a city in Connecticut, uh, state of Connecticut by name of Lyme City. And what they have observed in these people, they have heart problem. And later on in life, they develop arthritis. So they send a group from CDC uh, to uh, the city and see what the problem is. And what they found out that uh, most of the population have this bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi. So the bacteria, it seems causes the heart problem and then eventually develop arthritis. They put the people on antibiotic and you, the, most of the problems went away. And then they found out, okay, where the bacteria came from, from ticks, which was the city was surrounded by a good population of deers. So the deers would suck blood. No, I'm sorry, the ticks would suck blood, deers suck blood. The, the ticks would suck blood from deers and those ticks will attack attached to human neck, usually their favorite area is neck area, and they uh, put the bacteria inside of human while they're sucking blood, you know, takes love blood, and then uh, we human become infected. Okay. And the mouth part capitulum is the culprit. So that's why when you go to a doctor and they say, okay, remove the tick, uh, they are, I hope they are trained to remove uh, the, uh, the capitulum, the mouth part too. That's why it's not recommended that you should do that. Uh, you should take the tick out um, or, uh, you know, put alcohol on it, put fire on it, uh, you know, the lighters, uh, things like that. Uh, the mouth part must come out too. Dermal center, uh, and the name of the disease, it's another tick, uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever and uh, tularemia. Uh, it's not, tularemia is it's not fun, but Rocky Mountain spotted fever is not as bad as Lyme disease, okay? Anyhow, uh, Bophilus uh, annulatus is a Babesia. Babesia, at the beginning of semester, we talked about it. It is a uh, protozoan. So this organism transmit this protozoan in the cattle. And the cattle is called Texas cattle fever, uh, red water fever. They release uh, when they're uh, urinating. Uh, uh, Texas cattle red water fever. And Babesia, we human get Babesia as well. As well. Uh, Babesia by Gemina. And then in human, they, we think it's malaria. When the clinician or the lab technician look at it on the microscope, they think uh, we got malaria, uh, which is not malaria. This is <clears throat> not as bad as malaria. Um, here's the life cycle of, <clears throat> based on CDC, life cycle of sar uh, sarcoptic scabies and um, so on and so forth. Um, Ixodes, the life cycle, the tick, uh, dermal center. Again, uh, look at these animals, the head, cephalothorax, everything is in one part. Everything is in one part, head, thorax, abdomen. Uh, Babesia, life cycle. Um, my God, what is this? This is a lot. Cyphylum chilicerata um, are spiders, uh, really dangerous. Most people fear spiders without uh, good reason. Spiders are uh, timid creatures. 
who are allies of human in our battles against uh, insects, pests. Yes, American tarantula can get large, but rarely bite. And their bite is not dangerous. However, some spiders needs defending. Um, and this, all of this information is correct. Uh, black widow spiders are dangerous and their venom is neurotoxic. Brown recluse, uh, that's another one, hemolytic venom and destroys tissues around the uh, bite. And some Australians and some uh, South American spiders are the most dangerous and aggressive spiders with some of the most toxic venom which cause intense pain and neurotoxicity. Here they are some pictures of um, black widow and recluse and um, for your enjoyment and pleasure. Okay, subphylum crustacean, let's stop here. I would like to stop this session. Uh, I've been talking about about 40, 50 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna stop and then I'll come back. When we come back, we start with this.